Two Shoes, One First Run Impressions video. Good morning, YouTube. What's up, guys? I hope you're safe and healthy and happy and doing okay. We're just jumping right into it today because I have two shoes and one first run impressions video. These two shoes are from the same brand and they're essentially the same shoe, but one is neutral and the other is stability. And those shoes are the Brooks Glycerin 19 and the Brooks Glycerin GTS 19. They're both still dirty and kind of wet because I literally just got in the door from running them. Here, I'll show you. gotten along in the past. I didn't love the Hyperion Tempo. I liked the Hyperion Elite, but it gave me blisters. I liked the Ghost 13. I thought it was a solid trainer, but it didn't really like spark my interest. And I hated the Glycerin 18. And I was shocked that they would even consider that uh, um, their most cushioned shoe at the time because I didn't feel like it was cushioned at all. So I was a bit skeptical when I saw that the Glycerin 19 was coming out, but of course I wanted to give it a shot because I mean, that's what we do here. We give shoes a shot, whether we are skeptical or we aren't. But I have to say that I am really happy that I did give it a try because the Glycerin 19 has been a total joy and pleasure to run in. And so has the Glycerin GTS 19. So today I'll be talking about these two shoes and what I liked about them, how they're different from each other, and yeah, we're just gonna dive right into it. Uh, but before we do, I wanna let you guys know that both of these shoes were sent to me for the purpose of review from Running Warehouse and from Brooks. However, neither company can tell me what to say. They're not gonna see this before you. And all of my opinions, which are amazing, let's be honest, are my own. They're not that amazing. Don't worry, I'm not that narcissistic. The Brooks Glycerin 19 is nine ounces for a woman's size eight, but for my size 10 and a half women's, the shoe came in at about 10.4 ounces. Now the Glycerin GTS 19 is about 9.4 ounces for a woman's size eight, and for me, it came in at about 10.9 ounces in a 10 and a half. So we are talking a little bit of a weight difference here, and I think really what that's gonna come down to is the guide rails on the sides of the shoe. I think that's pretty much where all the weight is in here. Both the Glycerin 19 and the GTS have a 10 millimeter drop with what I believe is 31 millimeters in the heel and 21 in the forefoot. And they are also both true to size. So now let's talk about the upper. I think both of these shoes have the exact same upper. I cannot find a single difference. Um, so I'll put this down for now, but just be aware that they're identical, as far as I can tell. Brooks is using an engineered mesh here. Uh, it is extremely comfortable, very soft. And on the midfoot of the shoe, they have some 3D printed overlays for that structure and support and get you a nice snug fit through the midfoot. And moving back to the heel, it is a very sturdy, hard heel counter and it's gonna keep your ankle locked in. When I say that this upper is comfortable, it is comfortable. Apparently they're using some kind of interior lining here to make it even more comfortable. And I definitely feel that it's super soft in the forefoot. The tongue is very plush, very comfortable and soft. 
And yeah, we have lots of padding around the ankle collar. So if you're looking for comfort, you're gonna find it in both the Glycerin 19 and in the GTS version as well. I'd say it's fairly breathable. It's nothing to write home about, which is fine now for the colder months that some of us are experiencing. Um, but in the summer, it might be a little hot. I don't know, I'd have to test it. Right now, I'm not having any problems with breathability. It's just right. I do feel like I can get a nice solid lockdown in the midfoot of this shoe. And then in the forefoot, my foot has plenty of space here width-wise, and I felt comfortable. I, my foot just feels good in the shoe. I didn't need to use the last loophole for heel slipping, which I was very happy about. And like I said earlier, the tongue is very plush and padded and inside feels super comfortable and it is gusseted. So that helps with that lockdown fit across the midfoot. I think Brooks did a really nice job with this upper. It's definitely my favorite upper from Brooks that I've tried recently. I didn't get any hot spots, blisters, irritation. My foot felt snug and dialed in, but not overly so. And I had some extra room to kind of breathe and my toes could splay out and it was great. Both the Glycerin 19 and the GTS version have DNA loft, but they start to kind of separate a little bit in terms of feel and some of the technologies implemented into the midsoles. So let's get on with it. Both these shoes are rocking a full length DNA loft midsole. It is the most DNA loft that has been in any Brooks shoe thus far. And then of course on the GTS version on both the medial and lateral sides of the midfoot dipping back into that heel area, you have Brooks guide rails, which is their stability system that helps to keep your foot in place and prevent it from under or over pronating. So let's talk about the neutral glycerin first. This is a massive improvement over the 18. It is plush. It is comfortable, super soft, and it's so enjoyable to run in. This is what a max cushion shoe is supposed to feel like. If you look at the shoe from the side profile, you'll see that the heel looks pretty beefed up and then the forefoot gets a little bit more minimal. But honestly, you get so much more cushioning than it looks like in the forefoot of the shoe. It is very, very plush. I've been experiencing some PF issues lately and I've been doing a lot of shorter, easier runs. And this just fits the bill for that. I mean, it's great for short, easy distance, but this could go long and long and long and longer than that. And what I like about it so much is that my foot isn't sinking, like the Clifton kind of feel and those sorts of shoes. It's soft, don't get me wrong, but you're not gonna feel like you're dragging the shoe along after those longer miles. I think that it's gonna feel fresh. There is a little bit of energy return in this midsole. It's not a crazy amount, but it's enough to notice it. This shoe's midsole has changed me from kind of a Brooks critic to a Brooks believer. I think this is such a good shoe and it's really gonna be a solid long run choice for a lot of people, including myself. So the GTS 19 still feels extremely plush in that forefoot. You're still gonna get tons of comfort and cushioning for those longer miles. But one thing that I do wanna point out is that it does feel a tad bit firmer in the forefoot. Now, I don't know if that's because it's a stability shoe and they wanted to make it a little firmer so that your foot was more stable on the platform, or if they put a little bit less in there, I'm not sure, I can't confirm that. When I first put the shoe on my foot, I thought, oh, this doesn't feel anything like the 19, like the regular 19. It feels different and firm and kind of bleh. Well, I ate my words on that too, because when I was running in the shoe for the first time, it opened up and it felt nice and cushioned in that forefoot. And at times I've actually enjoyed taking this shoe out over the neutral version because it gives me that little extra support and stability with the guide rails. This is another case of a stability shoe that has a stability technology that's not intruding on your stride and forcing you in a way that you're not really feeling as natural. I didn't feel these guide rails for one second. So if you're looking for a long run shoe that's plush and cushioned and comfortable, but you need a little stability in there, I'm with you and this is another fantastic option. You might lose a little bit of cushion with the GTS version, but for what you're losing, you're gaining in support and stability. And to me, that's worth it. By no means does this shoe feel firm or hard as a rock. There's nice amounts of cushioning underfoot, but I just wanted to let you know that they do feel slightly different on foot. 
As far as underfoot feel goes, these are the two shoes that I wanna grab the most recently. And that's saying a lot because a Brooks shoe really hasn't been that for me ever. And now I got two shoes that are. And as far as the outsole goes, they both have the exact same thing. Both these shoes are rock and blown rubber. They got plenty of it, lots in the forefoot, some on the medial side of the midfoot, and we got some dipping in the heel. This is a lot of rubber, which surely contributes to the weight of the shoes, but uh, it's supposed to be a shoe that goes long for a long time and gives you plenty of miles. So I do understand why there is so much of it. And it's also great. It provides fantastic traction. Today's run was on a slushy, yucky, kind of wet day and I felt totally confident out there. The rubber was gripping onto the pavement just fine. I don't feel like this rubber gets in the way of the ride of the shoe either. I like that there are some flex grooves here to just help you roll forward better. Um, and the shoe just like works with your foot. It is stiff, they're both a bit stiff. Um, but I didn't have a problem with that. Both the Glycerin 19 and the Glycerin GTS 19 are $149.95 on runningwarehouse.com, which is a little bit on the steep side. I don't love 150 for a trainer. I know this is supposed to be more of a max cushion shoe, so they're up in the price a little bit. I don't love it, but I think that these shoes are both worth it. If you're interested in picking up either the Glycerin 19 or the Glycerin GTS 19, go to the description of this video. I'll have some links there. Click those and pick up your own pair. Keep in mind, these are affiliate links with Running Warehouse. However, that doesn't mean much for you. It just helps out my channel so I can discover shoes from a brand that I actually really super enjoy in hopes that you will too. In conclusion, both of these shoes are a yes for me. I'm gonna to continue to run in them. They're my go-tos right now, guys. I mean, I, I love running in both of these shoes. I highly recommend this to all kinds of runners, whether you're a beginner or an elite, and you're looking for a little cushioning under your foot. Maybe if you're a neutral runner or you just need a little support, Brooks has got your back here. Well guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the Brooks Glycerin 19 and the Brooks Glycerin GTS 19. If you enjoyed this video, please like it down below and subscribe when you're done with all that. Hit the notifications bell down below so you can find out every time I upload a new video. I definitely dig this color more though. I have another video for you guys on Sunday, but in the meantime, get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. See you next time. Well, that, well, guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the Brooks Glycerin GT. Well, guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the. Well, guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the Brooks Glycerin GTS. Oh boy. Well, guys, that concludes my first run impressions of the Brooks.